In the following demonstration, we have a closer look at uh, GitOps for Manufacturing Edge. We will see actually how uh, we can speed up the software development and release cycles uh, for applications that span from uh, central data center to manufacturing plants and line data servers. And uh, this means on one hand, the software development and rollout. On the other hand, also optimizing the rollout of configurations uh, across uh, multiple manufacturing plants. All this with an approach uh, that is called GitOps, where we uh, have all the different changes managed in Git and uh, using processes like pull requests and deployments um, to hold out uh, the right configuration to the right side in a very controlled manner. The context is here uh, a simplified uh, application for monitoring and production environment. Uh, the application spans across three levels uh, from top to bottom, the central data center, the factory data center and the line data server. And uh, we will see in the first demo flow how an uh, OT ops uh, manager can change the configuration um, of sensors uh, using a GitOps approach. And in the uh, second demo flow, we have a look at the uh, developer and uh, especially rolling out software change uh, with, an, with a pipeline and uh, doing the correct versioning and doing this controlled uh, within GitOps approach. Uh, during the demonstration, the dashboard of the sensor can be monitored uh, by the machine operator. Let's have first a look at the application. Here you can see the dashboard uh, for the, uh, which is used by the machine operator to observe uh, various parameters. And uh, as you can see, the, the metrics are rolling in, in, in real time. The technology beneath uh, is deployed on Red Hat OpenShift. And uh, let's have a quick look at the uh, uh, pods running. First, you see, uh, for example, the pod for the line dashboard. For that dashboard, actually in one uh, OpenShift environment, uh, in a different kind of project, you also see the pods for the for the messaging. That means uh, for the AMQ and uh, pushing the the data to the real time UI. And uh, on a completely different cluster, you see actually the two pods for the uh, machine sensors. Now we are going to change the configuration of the sensor using a GitOps approach. As you can see here, we have uh, two sensors, uh, but uh, one sensor sending temperature and uh, vibration data, and the other sensor only vibration data. We are jumping directly into GitHub for, for that change. And uh, in this directory, you see the settings for a specific deployment. But, uh, the deployment is here, the production deployment. And uh, the settings here are really specific uh, to this production environment. Um, but we can fine tune these uh, because the generic settings are uh, defined in templates. Uh, here you see uh, the templates for machine sensors and, uh, for example, the properties which are generic and uh, for all sensors. And with the approach that we have here with the directory structure, and with the concepts of using customize to tune the manifests, we can only do, or we can do the changes really uh, in the fine grain manner uh, without duplicating a lot of configurations. Now let's do the actual change. Uh, we are simply uh, putting here this attribute sensor temperature enable and true. Uh, we'll make a uh, a quick comment here, temp to true and uh, commit the change. And we are committing this here now directly into master. 
in a pure GitOps approach, uh, we would create a pull request or create, do this in a branch and create a pull request. But uh, let's do this now directly into, into master. We can now also jump to Argo CD and Argo CD is observing uh, the changes uh, in a regular interval. Uh, we can uh, force a sync uh, so that we don't need to wait. Oh, it's already jumping in. You see the changes here now. It uh, actually monitored the change here uh, and then uh, deploys the new configuration to the, to the pods. This will be picked up pods will be restarted and, uh, and we will see also here in a second uh, already immediately how this extra line is coming up, the extra chart is coming up for the temperature data. Uh, so that means uh, with this change um, and the monitoring or the approach of Argo CD and uh, monitoring the files in the Git repository and forcing that uh, to the actual OpenShift deployment in the production environment, uh, we deployed this change um, automatically. In the second part, uh, I'd like to discuss actually the rollout of uh, software changes uh, using OpenShift pipelines. Uh, this will involve here on one hand the OpenShift the pipelines, that means the Tecton project, uh, to, to build the software, uh, to test the software, pushing then containers to Quay and then rolling these containers out again. Uh, we assume here that the software change has been already made uh, and uh, we will drill down into uh, the pipeline. This is actually an example or this is the pipeline how to roll out uh, the uh, consumer component. It has uh, several steps, which I would like to explain briefly. In the uh, first step here, uh, the, the containers are built and uh, then pushed into the local reg registry. We are using here semantic versioning. That means uh, on the another next steps, we are having then the, the version file counted uh, one level up. And uh, with that also, uh, tagging the newly created uh, containers in the local registry. Uh, because this is the GitOps approach, we are also tagging now uh, the, the manifests to declare which image should be deployed. And we're doing this in this step here uh, to actually uh, change the configuration, the GitOps configuration in, uh, in, on GitHub. Uh, that would be a change like this here, where you see here the customized file and then the image and the text. That means we are uh, tagging the image here uh, uh, so that the new version would be deployed in this uh, test environment as a first step. Uh, and then running, uh, actually uh, informing Argo CD to deploy this change. So it would pick up the customized file and deploying uh, new containers. And then uh, having that deployed in the in this uh, testing environment here, uh, doing various tests for, for the sensor, consumer, and end-to-end -end test. And if everything runs okay, uh, we can now, or the pipeline pushes the uh, image to, to Quay. Because from the central Quay repository, uh, we would feed this into into the production environments. So, and one once uh, this is done, we also modify the GitOps uh, repository for for the production environment. That would be the same step uh, like before. And in this time, we can also have a closer look here. Uh, it would simply go ahead and change the customer's file with the the customization file with the with the new image tags. Uh, and then, uh, and at the last step, uh, it would create uh, actually the pull request. The pull request to say, look, the changes have made correctly, and now we can, uh, somebody can now say, okay, I want to roll in this, this change uh, for production. Um, this, are now, this is the pull request that can be viewed uh, of the changes of the configuration. That means uh, exactly saying which container should run where, and uh, approving this uh, pull request and merging that in 
Argo CD then would pick that up and then also enforcing the change uh, for the production environment. So we looked at uh, two GitOps use cases for Manufacturing Edge. On one hand, um, rolling out a configuration change for software sensors uh, that has been then uh, deployed uh, through, an, uh, through enforcing the manifest uh, with Argo CD to the right location. And secondly, um, a Tecton pipeline uh, where we uh, build new containers, test containers, uh, put the right versions into the manifests and then rolling out that to the test environment, but also rolling that out or creating a pull request to roll this out into a production environment. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate one of the many ways you can extend the GitOps model to your machine learning workflow. As part of the GitOps for Manufacturing Edge demo, we have sensors deployed at the edge data centers that are using machine learning to detect when anomalies occur. In this scenario, I want to show you one of the many ways in which a data scientist can develop a model at the core data center, then update multiple edge data centers simultaneously with one commit to a GitOps repository. Here, we are utilizing the Open Data Hub operator to provide a data scientist with the tools that they need to develop their machine learning models on OpenShift. Here we have a Jupyter Notebook with a model that a data scientist has just updated and now needs to make it available for all of our edge data centers. In this cell, you can see we have serialized this model so that it can be packaged and deployed in our updated image for model serving. A Git repository that will provide the source for our image that will be deployed to the models at the edge. Once the updated model has been committed to the repository, we will execute an OpenShift pipeline that will orchestrate our CICD process before we release this model into production. The first task will build the model serving container image locally using a source to image build process and automatically determine the next available image tag build number for the release. The next few tasks will perform our CI test to verify that the model deploys and runs successfully in our staging environment. Once the CI test executes successfully, the pipeline will push the new release of the container to an image registry that can be accessed by the edge data centers. Finally, the pipeline will update the GitOps repository by creating a pull request that will specify what version of our model needs to be deployed at the edge. Now that the container image and GitOps repository have been updated, all of the edge data centers running Argo CD will detect the change and update their models accordingly. This example shows one of the many ways you can extend the GitOps model to your preferred data science workflow. If you would like to learn more or try this out on your own, please look for more information on our website at opendatahub.io.